Let's bring in Ben Gessling right now. Um, ben, didn't want to talk to you so soon under these circumstances, but the Vikings keep making news. J.J. McCarthy out for the season, we learned on Wednesday. Maybe not a huge surprise. We kind of foreshadowed that on the Axis Vikings podcast on Tuesday, but now that's official. And Jordan Addison carted off the field in joint practices on Wednesday in Cleveland. Oh, that sounds like maybe that's not too serious, yeah. an ankle Kevin O'Connell tells us after Wednesday practice, although um, we didn't think the McCarthy news was all that serious until it was. Yeah, it's it's been a day for the Vikings. I, the um, the the infamous, famous, infamous. You you make the call. Uh, Mike Zimmer meeting at the end of his time in Minnesota about the the PowerPoint of all of the things that went wrong for him in his eight years as Vikings head coach. Uh, Kevin O'Connell is getting a few slides to put on his own PowerPoint presentation at some point. should he choose to uh, take a similar path of action. It's been, yeah, kind of a, a tough week, obviously, for the Vikings. And uh, the Addison thing probably won't be a big deal. But J.J. McCarthy certainly is. It's a setback. I mean, was he going to play this year? No. Um, I, at least I don't think he was going to be the starter. But I do think the loss of on-field development time and a little bit more of an opportunity to say – is he the guy or not? Um, yeah, Kevin O'Connell talked a lot today about things that would make you think they have settled that. I also think it's it's a day to put on a brave face, and that makes some sense as well. But I think losing the the on field time they had to work with him is you know, not what they wanted, certainly. And um, as you're trying to make the decision on him for 2025, I do think there's you know you just you lose some of that development time. There's no way around that. To me, the interesting thing, two interesting things are a, um, you know, how does this impact his development for 2025? And can you then say he's going to be ready? And, you know, there were indications that he was definitely making progress. And B, um, as our colleague Jim Suhan wrote about the other day, and you brought up on Access Vikings, like, what does this mean for Kwesi Dofo Mensa and Kevin O'Connell? Does this mean they're you know, under the under the gun a little bit to produce this season without knowing if McCarthy is going to be their quarterback of the future? Does it kind of get kicked down the road a year? So does this give them an extra almost an extra year of job security in in a in a kind of warped way because they're gonna have to, you know, get a full year of McCarthy before they can evaluate these guys? Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say at the moment. I don't know that I look at this as like a binary thing. I don't think this is okay, get rid of them if this year doesn't go the way they wanted or give them four years to extend things and get all of the time that they want with J.J. McCarthy. I think there are other options there. We've seen the Vikings use some of these in the past. I mean, they had, I think Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman got a year tacked on at their contracts at one point to kind of keep them out of that, you know, going into a contract year weirdness that comes about. I think that was maybe after... 2018, I think, because Zimmer got extended through 19 the first time. And then I think after 18, they tacked on a year to keep Zimmer and Spielman out of that boat. And then Leslie Frazier, after he takes a 3-13 and team to the playoffs the following year with Christian Ponder at quarterback, uh, he got the one-year extension as well uh, into 20, I think 2014 would have been paid for so that he was not coaching into a contract year in 2013. So there are ways to do that. And we've seen the Vikings do that before. I wouldn't be stunned if that's the way they go about it. You know, maybe they add a year, maybe they add two. I don't think the, the full, like here's a four year extension needs to happen right now. And and maybe they're so good with Sam Darnold that they say, hey, we've done enough. Let's, let's uh, go put the money behind that. But I think there are probably kind of, intermediary measures available when you get into this kind of a situation. I, I think they're still very excited about Kevin O'Connell and Quasi Adolfo Mensa. Um, it just is, uh, you know, um, it, it complicates the, the decision-making process as a whole. Well, it does. And, you know, part of what makes it complicated is the NFL is not just about picking the right players. It's about having finances line up. It's about kind of, picking the right quarterback, certainly. And with McCarthy, um, what you've got is this kind of cost control. And the last time we went through this with 
Teddy Bridgewater, they kind of thought they had this plan mapped out and then Teddy's hurt in, you know, late, late camp of 2016 kind of starts this chain of events. I think you're maybe writing about a little bit of this at some point here soon. And you've got this you know, great new newsletter that's coming out. Can, can you shed some light on kind of what the financial implications of this are and in you know, any eerie, not as serious, but eerie parallels to the Teddy Bridgewater era? I mean, I think the parallel, I mean, it's not as catastrophic, obviously. As of course. Water. I mean, that that day and everything that went with it, I think, is going to be kind of a singular moment in Vikings history, at least in recent, recent Vikings history. I do think th what that day did is pushed them from rookie quarterback to um, – Sam Bradford. They make the trade for Sam Bradford yep. right away. And then they're out of that world where they have cheap quarterbacks because then they go from Bradford, at least financially. Uh, Bradford didn't start most of that season in 2017. It's Case Keenum, but Bradford to Kirk Cousins. So the years of quarterback surplus are valuable and they're more limited now in the modern NFL because these, these rookie quarterback contracts are four years plus a fifth year option, but the fifth year option gets more expensive too. So really you have four years of it being really cheap and Bridgewater getting hurt costs them the third and fourth years of that. McCarthy is similar only in the sense that you lose a year of that. Not that he was going to play anyway, but it did, I think, rob them of the certainty that they can go into 2025 knowing J.J. McCarthy is our guy. We don't need to go do the $10 million bridge quarterback with Sam Darnold like they did this year. And, you know, maybe they'll still do that. I, it's still possible that they would say, you know what? We saw enough. We think he's going to be ready. If he stays healthy, he's fine. We can go sign the backup and not have to worry about it. But just that that ability to say definitively, this is our guy and we are ready to go with him and kind of plan financially, knowing that he is established and we don't need to do anything else. We can spend our money on other things. I think you lose a little bit of that. So um, is it throwing the entire plan off course? No. Is this as big of a deal as Bridgewater or Dante Culpepper in 2005? No, I don't think it is. But it does, when you look at how detailed they've tried to be with their plan, it does push you away from that just a little bit. So I think that is a component of this that just kind of reminds me of that Bridgewater day in the sense that, the, you know, like I said, these, these years on rookie quarterback deals are kind of a cheat code sometimes in the NFL. We've seen teams go to the Super Bowl with not that great of quarterbacks because they can build the rest of it around. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo is the one that comes to my mind first. Jared Goff, before he became the better version of Jared Goff, also did this. So you see this happen enough that teams want it, and you lose a year of that in the process of all of this happening with J.J. McCarthy. Two more things, then we better get out of here. One, really quick, explain why medically they would opt for, you know, the the, the fuller procedure. Yeah. You know, the, there was the kind of two ways you can do a meniscus they opt for the, the, you know, the more extensive surgery that's going to keep them out for the season as opposed to maybe a month or two. Yeah. I mean, I think it's you, I, as I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one right. on, uh, on daily delivery. We try. We try. Yeah, we try. I mean, you learn enough of this stuff that you, you do your best journalistic effort to, to con convey what's going on. As I understand it, um, you can do a trim if it's a if it's a minor injury or you say you know what let's just trim it off and we don't have to have it all because i don't you don't have to like you don't have to have a meniscus for your knee to function i think having a meniscus keeps you from bigger issues down the road probably arthritis I and mean, being bone on bone that kind of stuff so if you said we're not worried about that just get it done get me back out there sooner you can go about it that way uh, but when it is a bigger thing, and especially when it's a bigger thing that you're saying, we want to be as responsible about your long-term health as we can, you go for the full repair. And I think in this case, I mean, a lot of times you see this be a tug of war with the team and between the team and the player. I remember that with Adrian Peterson a little bit in 2016, where they wanted him back sooner. And he was like, no, I'm getting the full repair because 
I want to play longer and I don't want to be on arthritic knees when I'm 50. I mean, that's, that comes into a, a player's consideration certainly more than it does with a team. But in this case, there is zero reason for the team and the player not to be on the same page here. J.J. McCarthy wants his knees to be in as good a shape as they can possibly be long term. The Vikings also are going to have more value invested in J.J. McCarthy if everything goes right when he's 30 than when he's 21. So I think taking the long term here makes a lot of sense for everybody. And it's not surprising that they did that just because of how this group tends to work. But I also think it's the right course of action for everybody's interests in this case. One more thing. JJ McCarthy is one thing. Jordan Addison goes down, like we said, ankle injury. They say it's not serious. Let's just game this out. What if it's a little bit more serious than we think? What if it keeps them out at least for some of some of some time here? How much of a blow is that to a team that's not had a lot of great news lately? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, a not serious ankle injury, if it's three weeks, I mean, I, and we don't know at this point. We don't know yeah. the extent of it. But let's say it's, well, it's a sprain and he can be back from it in, you know, three weeks, something like that. That puts you close to the opener. So if it's something where he's going to miss a game or two, I mean, my point is we're not that far from not that serious injury saying hey, you're going to miss at least a game or two. And no TJ Hawkinson, at least for the you know first few weeks of the season, I would think. Um, you know, Justin Jefferson is healthy, obviously, but there's not a lot of depth behind him, at least in terms of people that would scare you and make you not put all of your attention on Justin Jefferson. Uh, Jalen Naylor has had a really good camp. I think he's going to be wide receiver three, but if he has to move to wide receiver two and you don't have that tight end as a pass catching threat, Robert Tunyon maybe turns into that, but he's been hurt as well. I, I think it is certainly worth keeping an eye on from that standpoint of things, because the schedule, the Giants game is winnable, but then it gets tough pretty quickly. It's 49ers at home, playoff team, Texans at home, playoff team, Packers on the road, playoff team, Jets in London, not playoff team, but a uh, Hall of Fame quarterback that you're facing against the secondary. So, uh, and then you come home after the bye, it's Lions at home, playoff team, and then at Rams on Thursday night. So, playoff uh, lots of, uh, Lots of challenges early on, and they have to kind of be able to handle all those things pretty quickly. Wrap them in bubble until the season starts. Yeah, we'll no see doubt. what happens. Yeah. All right, Ben. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Mike.